What did you think when you first heard the concept of the show? So I loved it right out of the gate. I'm obviously a fan of the franchise. This is, this is a show, it's a new dating series that's from the creator of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, but the format's really wild. The best way, the way I describe this is, it's like watching The Bachelorette or The Bachelorette on speed, essentially. It's so, it's crazy. At the start of every episode, there's 10 eligible men or women vying for the heart of a mystery man or woman that they can't see and their identity is not revealed at the beginning. Over the course of an hour, you've got four pageant-style rounds whittling down the group from 10 to 10 to 2. At the end of that, that's when the mystery man or woman's identity is then revealed just in time for a romantic proposal to take place at the end of an hour. Going into this show as a host, I'd never seen anything like it. I was very skeptical as whether or not, who's gonna get down on a knee after speaking to someone that they, they haven't even really been able to see for the last hour? And what I was shocked to find out was there are people out there hoping to find love that are willing to go to extreme measures to achieve that. And they do this. They actually... <laughs> get down on a knee and open a box that has a diamond ring inside. Is it a Neil Lane? <laughs> it is a Neil Lane. <laughs> Good question. Neil Lane was there every episode. And really? he's got a collection of his finest engagement rings. And do they get to pick out something? Uh, or? Maybe. They might. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Uh, so when you were The Bachelor, you had several weeks to totally. figure out the personalities and see who you might like. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is in an hour about, right? So. Yeah, listen, being on a show like The Proposal, it's not for everybody. First off, I don't know, having done this for experience being The Bachelor in 2004, I think when you go on a, rea a reality dating show, it really forces you to lower your guard and become revealing and be honest and open and do it with a bunch of strangers and on the proposal, do it in front of a live audience and then of course a nationally TV audience watching at home. But the format of this show is so wild because you're trying to establish a romantic connection in 60 minutes. So the questions that get asked on this show are things that you cannot ask somebody on a first date. I guarantee you there are married couples out there that have been together five, 10 years that still have not had the guts to ask themselves the questions that you will hear on this show. You don't have time to mess around on the proposal. You, you have to learn about each other. And so there are moments I'm hosting this show where I'm trying to do my best like Chris Harrison's stoic. Mm -hmm. mm, good question. On the inside, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I cannot believe she just asked him that. So they come up with the questions that they want to know from their potential it's all people. it's all up to them it's what's most important to them nothing is off the table wow. it could be politics religion family sex life it's all fair game and what we what, what happens to me as a host and what will happen to people at home watching the show you'll learn a lot about the contestants and the mystery man or woman based on the questions that are asked and do you give them advice at all, the way Chris Harrison maybe gave you advice? Yeah. Or, it's or a, how does that, what is your role exactly? It's a great this? question. So one of the big reasons why I wanted to host this show is because I was on the show back in 2004 on The Bachelor. And I feel like in a weird way, I sort of relate a little bit to what these people are going through on this show. I, I know how hard it can be to sort of have to strip layers down and be as open and revealing um, in this type of format. Um, I sympathize with them because it gets very emotional. On this show, just like on The Bachelor or Bachelorette, tons of laughter, there's some tears too, and I think my role as a host, interesting because I've lived the other side of it, I can kind of sympathize and empathize and hold their hand through this emotional 60-minute journey and try to encourage them along the way you know, because it's, it's tough, and I know that from experience. It's, it's not for everybody. And so every week is a new set of people, but will we get updates on how people who've decided to go through with this, how they're doing? I really hope so. I, it's, it's, I've asked that question to our uh -huh. producers throughout the filming, too. And I know our producers and executives are talking about doing that. I think we should because it's, it's pretty neat. It's one thing to hopefully see a proposal at the end sure. of the hour, but then what you obviously want to do as fans, you want to find out how they're doing down the road. And, and, and to, it's kind of like a case study, really, to find out if this format, in fact, actually can work. Mm -hmm. And once they're engaged, what happens? They leave and they're just engaged and they have to figure out the rest? Or? I, think, I think at that point, I think it's up to them. Although I wouldn't necessarily cancel out a potential. I wonder if like, we would do like a televised wedding. Like, you know, like The Bachelor's done that in the yeah, past. I wonder uh -huh. if we do like a proposal televised wedding. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. That would be cool. 
And uh, lastly, would you ever do a show like this? <laughs> so the 2004 Jesse absolutely would do a show like this. But having lived it and been through it now, I, you know, I think I'm just good hosting. And I will say this. It is way less stressful hosting this show yeah. than being on The Bachelor. Oh, I bet. I Your life you is. That. <laughs> I sleep so much easier at night. It's great. All right. Well, thank you awesome. so much. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.